let's get into it. Let's get into Kong Skull right. Island. Now, I will say this. I took the whole family, uh, <laughs> wife, two kids, uh, 12 and 8, and I have to say- uh, What's I it rated? Was, uh, it's PG-13. Okay. So, but here's the thing. I always check the uh, IMDb parent guide before, if I'm not sure, seeing a movie. It's something that seems like about borderline. So I was a little apprehensive taking my eight-year-old, but he's a boy, he loves, you know, action, superhero-y, monster-y type stuff. And uh, I get in the movie theater, I'm thinking, oh, God, he's going to be like the only boy in here, and it's going to be a bunch of adults looking at us. And uh, the, uh, the theater was filled with mostly children <laughs> at Saturday night at 8 o'clock to see this movie. So I'm like, oh, okay, I have one of the some of the older children here. Um, so it definitely, I think, was okay if your kid can handle that. There was a couple of things that kind of scared him a little bit, but for the most part, he could he could definitely handle you it. You can really sure. subtract about five years from the the parental rating. It, you know, like it, it depends on the movie, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, and also like like now, my daughter at eight, I wouldn't have taken her because the violence would upset her more at eight. Like, you just got to. And know she your doesn't kids. deserve attention, right? Other yeah, than that. yeah. You know, so the son. You know, they uh, that. That continues the family line. It's, it's <laughs> and, the, and the name. It's uh, <laughs> bloodline only yes. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Three so, white uh, guys yeah. talking about women's rights here on comedy film nerds. So, um, so it was a good time had by all. The entire family. We all loved the movie. It really was a cross between uh, Jurassic World and like Apocalypse Now. Even to the point where some of the shots were the same from like Apocalypse Now, like with the helicopters and then you know the sun. You could tell. Did the, did the smoke swirl like it, it did it, it was in... all these like little little uh um little nods to apocalypse now it was so good did a guy say good... kong don't surf it, <laughs> they, they, was... <laughs> they should have they should have but it was uh, it was that kind of thing it was such a genius thing like all you know the 70s music and it was all it was all there and... so there there was uh, some winking uh, in the style, more than one, more than one wink for sure. And what, but I loved about it too was like it was such an odd thing to put together, but it worked. It was like if you're gonna do a Kong Skull Island movie, why wouldn't you make it like Apocalypse Now? Of course, that makes perfect sense. And uh, it was a big, fun, dumb popcorn movie. Um, it wasn't. The, 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 it, it's not gonna win any awards, but the it was fun. Movie poster is like an Apocalypse Now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You see it like it's the helicopters. You know the, the big sun. The big sun. Yeah. yeah. And just happens to have. Kong and, and, and Kong it. when he punches drunk punches the mirror and yes. his hand bleeds <laughs> so, does Kong say the horror yeah the horror so it was really I mean we're getting like a summer season now in March which is which is really fun but I have to say this is the kind of movie where if you want a big summer dumb blockbuster popcorn movie this is the way you make it correctly it's got you know fun characters it's got fun um Good special effects, good action, crazy monsters. And the only thing, uh, the one criticism I had with it, too, is um, the movie tries to set up a little bit of more characters and character arcs with, like, John Goodman's character. Um, like, there's, like, a conspiracy, like, what's really going on? Who knows what? But all that kind of gets thrown away about halfway through, and now we're just monster fighting. Does, but you don't mind it too much. Does fat John Goodman fight skinny John Goodman? Yeah. <laughs> Through a mirror, and then his hand starts to bleed. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear yeah. Doors music. I, I will say, um, Skinny John Goodman, way more serious than Fat John Goodman because, you know, he's an amazing walked, actor. Yeah. Is he sort of like the Charles Grodin character from the 78 King Kong movie with Jeff Bridges and, and Jessica Lang, that's sort of the oil guy, the corporate oil guy? No, he's, he's, more, he's more of that guy, like. Well, he really needs to get to this island. He has a secret. What is it? It's like that kind of oh. like mis mystery kind of thing. I mean, it is. It gets a Paul little. Paul Reiser and aliens. Yeah, it, it, it kind of like it, it's that. It's got that weird thing of like. Uh, there was definitely some studio noting where, um, like, you're setting up all these things, and then some of them don't quite pay off. Or like, wait, why is everyone going to the island again? Like, there's already a mission, and then you guys are tagging on to the mission, and then you're part of the corporation, but you're not funding the mission. Like, you need help from the center. Like, there was, like, a lot of these weird... This seems a little more intricate than it needs to be to get yeah. to the island. <laughs> I thought when they had the uh, person that wrote the screenplay come into frame and explain what was happening, I thought that that was really just <laughs> that was a, yeah, really a little poor. too much yeah. exposition for yeah. you. Or yeah, it's just poorly executed. Yeah. Guy just comes in with yeah. a clipboard. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Yeah, here's what's uh, going on. We couldn't make this work, so yeah. we just decided basically I would come out. We had three act ones. We took a piece of each one and we put it here just to get us to the island. <laughs> 
Now, let me ask you this. The the director, Jordan Voigt uh, Roberts, it was his second feature. The only other feature he's directed is Kings of Summer. They came out in 2013. He's done a bunch of TV. How, how did you think he handled? I thought he did really well. And th- this is not an easy movie to direct because you have not only a lot of um, – actors there's a lot of moving parts you've got a ton of special effects you've got locations shooting and uh, I can't imagine some executive saw this project and went get me the Kings of Summer director I would love to hear how he went from Kings of Summer to this not available the guy that did Lombardo yes (laughs) he's not available 500 days of summer yes yeah that that knows the summer (laughs) because that island's gonna be hot yeah so it is. It's it's a weird uh, choice, but I, I will say it worked. It's not like he ruined anything. I mean, it was uh, it was a fun popcorny movie from start to finish. And how was Brie Larson? So she's like really after winning the Oscar last year for Room. She's really this was a paycheck movie for her. It was uh, she's the photographer, uh, and pretty much like okay, well you're gonna run around and take pictures, and that's it. This is where, like I said, like there was a lot of character kind of set up a little bit in the beginning, but then all that got kind of thrown away from about midpoint to. You know, monster fighting and running and eating. Monster eating. <laughs> Either other monsters or people or whatever. Just they would stop and eat. Yes. They yes. Would stop and <laughs> make a meal. Like, uh, you know, there's a, you know, the great fight with the, you know, a hell, you know, Apocalypse Now Helicopters versus King Kong is just a great set, a great scene, great set piece. It's just mm. so much fun. Well, that stuff from the trailer, that's the thing why I'm, I'm excited to see it is the trailer was like, wow, this looks like a blast in yeah. terms of just crazy. So is it sort of like maybe that last Jurassic Park movie with, with uh, Chris Pratt? Chris Pratt, where yeah, you Jurassic went, World. Eh, story schmory. Let's just get to some. Let's just get to the dinosaurs. <laughs> yes. Let me see better CGI and a head come off. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's uh it, it really uh, it really followed that formula. The only difference is like I said it really made the attempt in the beginning to kind of set up these characters and what else is going on and maybe some larger themes of uh like wait there's tunnels under the earth and you know Kong is really protecting the island and all that's in the trailer. These aren't spoilers, <laughs> but but then it's like like I, like I said not a lot of that pays off, but you don't care because you're having fun and you're watching giant monsters fight. Yeah. What movie do you think reached, okay, uh, CGI has really kind of achieved reality or close enough to reality? I'll tell you. I think it was probably Jungle Book, you know, that that just came out where, you know, all those animals looked really real. The backgrounds looked real. And you had a um, an actual live-action character, but it was seamless the way, like, they're literally on a green screen most of the time. Really? Running mm-hmm. around with like yeah. mocap people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I think. And I hear it's a good movie aside from it is, visual yeah. effects. I mean, the uh, the latest Planet of the Apes movies are like that now, too, where, you know. Better the, than the 70s? Those, uh, yeah. <laughs> then the ape masks. <laughs> the yes. ape masks that they wore. As the Planet of the Ape movies yeah. started to do the only sequels that got lower budgets as they progressed. <laughs> right, yeah. The 70s movies. Until they went shopping. Yeah. <laughs> what movie do you. And I'm sorry if I'm bogging down the proceedings, but. No, no. What movie do you feel like made the the biggest leap forward in special effects? Do you think it would be Jurassic Park or Star Wars? Oh, in terms of historically, uh, historically, yeah. that's a great that's a great question. I think, well, I think there's for like, for people our age because you know you could go back to sure. Um, I I think they were both kind of Snow uh, White. I think they were both kind of groundbreaking, like with Star Wars for its time for sure. But I remember going to see Jurassic Park when that first came out. Blue you know, literally, people were going, oh, dinosaurs are real. Dinosaurs. They look re- yeah. I think there's a, there's a lot of movies like that that are sort of stepping stones into the technology with Star Wars. You know, he used a lot of models. He, that was his big thing back in the 70s. He right. shot models and he did a The really- dynamics of it were, yeah. it was the first time the dynamics weren't. Right. Fuck. And, and sometimes, well, he, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, like, he did several things. Like, he had l- cameras going through the models to get you that sense of motion. And then he was the first one to start developing all of the computer generation. And then, like, uh, like as you guys were saying, I think Jurassic Park then took it to, there's a bunch of movies that took it to the and next level. And that was level. a mix of, like, Stan Winston's creature effects and uh, computer generated effects. I, I remember, too, then Terminator 2. The liquid metal scene of yes, Jason Patrick. Pretty... I was like, "Holy shit, what is this?" And then I remember the. This is more camera work, but the three hundred 
almost 300, it's like whatever, 320 degree camera thing of the first Matrix when they do that oh, fight the, and stop. the quote bullet time. Yeah, and then yes. you'd circle around. And then everyone Amazing. used it afterwards. Everyone everyone. Like, stop, stop. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you have, um, w- when you have these leaps in special effects, sometimes when you have a stumble in special effects, it makes the leap that much, uh, the next leap, look like it's that much more going forward. Like an example is the Star Wars prequels when you had the characters of like Jar Jar Binks when they were awful, they were poorly animated. And then uh, Peter Jackson comes along with Lord of the Rings with Weta Workshop, which was a completely separate special effects house and had a character like Gollum, which looked amazing. Well, he he was though, but Peter Jackson, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but he seemed like the first guy that started doing the mocap special effects where instead of just like a completely computerized Jar Jar Binks which looked fake and was awful he had guys in the mocap suits acting Andy Serkis acting and then he just put their their uh, whatever their act you know he CG'd in their external basically they, they, uh, yeah, they were, that's they were, one of, they that to me is when there was like this shift they cut human skin off of homeless people and put that on there I don't know if you knew that <laughs> That's what motion what, capture what, is. I'm yeah. all for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, just want to say one thing about Star Wars is I think I may have had the purest experience of seeing that because I was 14 years old. My family was coming back from dinner and we were passing a movie theater and my mom said, oh, I read something in the paper today about that movie. It's supposed to be really good. Do you guys want to go see that? And so we went and saw it and had no idea what oh. it was about, hadn't heard anything about it. And our minds were fucking blown. Right. I th- yeah, I had a similar, like, w- we had heard some buzz, and my dad went and got tickets, and we went out to this mall, and there was a big line, and there was a lot of excitement. We were just like, oh, I yeah. don't know, some kind of space thing. Yeah, I didn't know. I wasn't you know? that sure how, you know, what. It was the same thing. I was like, "Oh, okay." Well, it's a bunch of uh, a bunch of family and cousins. We're all mm-hmm. gonna go. I'm like, "Oh yeah, sounds sounds great. We're all gonna go." And uh, I didn't know that much about it either. And it was like, "Okay, this is like kind of like our cinematic awakening." That's when a love of movies really started for mm-hmm. for me. Anyway, sorry sorry about the tangent. Yes, no, no, no. That's a great tangent. This is my time to geek out. On, but Kong, uh, Kong on Skull movies. Island, I got to tell you, it, it's just it's a fun summer movie that you're getting in March. Now, it, don't overthink it. It is, but it, it's especially because, you know, if you remember the uh, Peter Jackson King Kong was just long and drawn oh, yeah. out and slow. This one is not that at all. It the was three entire, and a half hours. The yeah. Peter Jackson one was yeah, three and is, a half hours. We wow. only need Which two. Which is offensive. We only need two we only, for a King yeah. Kong movie, and this um, th- this did it. This, so the, 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 let me ask you these two questions. The $185 million budget, was that worth it? Oh, it's on screen. Really? Definitely, yeah. You can adjust. Because Kong looks that awesome. Kong looks great, especially, too, there's close-ups of his facial expressions, which look absolutely fantastic. Yeah, there's definitely uh, a move forward in some of the effects as well. There's, like, you know, a lot of creatures and monsters. And I was afraid, too, like, the tone would be off. Like, when you see the trailers, you think, oh, this is going to be a um, a real action-packed kind of, um, like, monster type movie with some scares in it. And then John C. Riley's in a trailer just making goofy jokes. I'm like, well, which movie is this going to be? Uh, and the movie, rightfully, was right in the middle. Oh. It was, uh, you know, it was big, dumb, fun action with some quippy lines. And mm-hmm. it was, yeah, summer, summer well, popcorn. Well, because we, we've just done a, uh, you talked about Logan last week, and we just did a Logan. Yes. A Logan spoiler up is, is dropping, um, which I saw. Logan was, we talked about, was really smart. Um it had a ninety-seven million dollar budget. It had cool action, but it wasn't all about like a lot of X Men movies. It wasn't all about the. It was CG. a character driven. It's a character driven yeah, thing. Story. So it's obviously Logan sounds like it's way more of a smarter. It's still a a fun, entertaining movie, but it's they're very different movies. And right. it's a hard yeah. R, isn't it? Uh, Logan. Logan is a hard R yeah, for, yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah, did not bring the kids to that one. No. And my my twelve year old daughter is bugging me to go see it because you know she loves superhero movies and I just said no it's, it's not violent. it's not it's not uh, hard horror older. movies are good if you want a divorce but are afraid to ask for one yeah just <laughs> bring the kids on the way back mention yeah <laughs> you took them yeah as they come back to the house shaking with their eyes yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there, but it's, yeah, it's so weird. I just feel like we're getting the summer in March now. And Beauty and the Beast is uh, this coming weekend. I'm curious to see how that does. Is that going to just scoop up a lot of money just based on, anyway, we'll talk about that yes. later. But, all right, yeah, we'll yeah. just scape up a bunch of Disney money. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I want to talk about, uh, well, I'll say real quickly, I mean, you can listen to the Logan spoiler up. I really liked Logan. It's a, it's a, as we were just saying, it's a lot of fun. It's very smart. It's great character arcs. How long is it? 
It's about two hours, maybe. Yep. Um, it's the right length. It's but the right. It, moves. it never feels like, oh, this is too long. And all, you don't have to be super into the X Men world to like it. No. If you are, you. I've never seen an X Men movie. I think you'd well, like then you could one. still like you would still. I like think you'd like movies. this a lot. Okay. Um, so yeah, and I think it puts a nice sort of, and we go into the spoiler obviously, but it puts a nice cap on the whole sort of uh, Hugh Jackman Wolverine, mm -hmm. uh, his run that he's been doing Definitely. since two thousand. Pardon my ADD for a second, but I just the question popped into my mind: What's the longest movie you've ever seen that you didn't want to end? You Se wanted it Seven to Samurai. And that's what, like five hours? That's three, almost four, three and forty okay. or something like that. Um, I would say uh, Lawrence of Arabia. David Rabe, just uh, Peter. Wait. Oh. Who directed that? Oh, oh, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. David. Uh, uh, David Lean. David, David Lean. Lean. Yes. Sorry, mm -hmm. wrong name. <laughs> what was one of the days? Close. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, all right, so let's talk about another movie you saw, Sing Street. 